Uh, my name is Xiao Hua Tian from Shanghai Jiao Tong University. Uh, I'm going to present our work, Counseling Audible Voice Commands Against Voice Control Systems. So the voice control systems provides a very convenient uh, human-computer interaction mechanism. Uh, however, recent studies reveal that such kind of a mechanism is subject to the inaudible voice command attack. Such kind of attack cannot be heard by human ears, but can be recorded by the microphone of the VCS. This will lead to a very um, serious uh, security issue because the adversary could leverage such kind of attack to disable the VCS uh, home, uh, user's home security system, leak the victim's privacy, or download some uh, malware stealthily, and so on. So researchers from different groups reveal that the non-linearity of the microphone's amplifier is a reason why such kind of attack can succeed. So as we know, in particular, the behavior of the amplifier uh, depends on the input signal's frequency. For the low frequency input signal, the amplifier is linear. And, uh, but, before, but for the signals with higher frequency, the amplifier is nonlinear. That is, the output signal contains uh, the squared item of the input signal. This is also uh, mentioned by Professor Yang in the previous talk. Okay. So if the adversary sends out multiple high frequency uh, signals, and those signals arrive at the microphone of the VCS, and the microphone's nonlinearity will uh, create several frequency components, as shown in this figure. All right. So note that the components in the red frame, they cannot be heard by human ears. Actually, they will be filtered out. But the component, we can see F1 minus F2 fall within the pass band of the amplifier, and uh, it can be recorded by the microphone. Okay, this is how the uh, inaudible voice command attack works. So the state of art for dealing with such kind of attack is basically forensics-based uh, approaches. For example, the authors of Dolphin Attack review that uh, the, difference feature, the different features between the legitimate voice command signal and the attack command signal. We can see uh, in the high frequency range, the inaudible voice com uh, command attack signal is weaker than the legitimate command signal. Another example is that the leap rate reveals the three features of the attack signal, including the amplitude skew, the energy concentration, and the signal correlation. All right. So forensics-based uh, approaches are smart and uh, very creative, but uh, they cannot deal with the situation that the attack command and the legitimate command signals arrive at the VCS at the same time. All right. So uh, an ideal case is that the VCS could just uh, uh, create an exact opposite of the attack signal as a cancellation signal so that the VCS could just have the legitimate command executed but have the attack signal canceled. All right. So this idea actually is motivated by the active noise cancellation ANC mechanism. ANC, as we know, uh, is uh, used in the headphone and uh, used for uh, canceling the environmental noise. But if it can actively cancel the noise, so why not actively cancel the attack signal, all right? But when we apply such kind of architecture to the scenario we're studying, we have to face several technical challenges. So the major one is that we have to guarantee the ANC operation sequence. So in particular, we have to guarantee that the attack signal and the cancellation signal arrive at the uh, VCS mic at the same time. So we must have to, uh, we must be able to compute the cancellation signal in the very tight time budget. To do so, we have to develop some hardware wireless interface. This is a disruptive solution, may not be applicable to already deployed VCSs. So our contribution is to propose an AIC, that is the Active Inaudible Voice Command Attack Cancellation. The basic idea is very simple, is we, we also utilize the nonlinearity of the microphone. Okay. So in this system, we introduce a guard signal transmitter broadcasting the guard signals. So when there's no attack signal, the guard signals will not impact the normal use of the VCS. But if there is an attack signal, the attack signal and the guard signal will aggregately create some spectrum structure like this uh, under, uh, in, in the orange circle. All right. So in particular, we could uh, give the formal expression of the signal, uh, the output signal, uh, where each component is corresponding to the signal as one, two, three, four in the spectrum. All right. 
So then we could create exactly a copy of a signal one and the two, and by, by designing an adaptive filter by referring to signal three, and the use uh, the copy of, of uh, the signal one and the two to subtract themselves. So after cancellation, we can see the figures uh, in below, the amplitude of the attack signal can be significantly reduced. All right. So, the basic idea of AIC is very simple, and we now examine uh, uh, that possible countermeasures attacker could come up with. So here we provide some uh, uh, variants of the attack uh, could be employed by the attacker. The first variant is a frequency hopping attack. So the purpose is to change the attack signal frequency before the adaptive filter convergence. So the attacker could divide a command signal into fewer fragments and they use different sub uh, frequency subcarriers to uh, send out those uh, commands. All right. So, but when we apply such kind of attack uh, to against our uh, defense mechanism, we have the following two interesting observations. The first one is that when the frequency hops, the impulses could uh, be detected. So this is a hardware feature cannot be hidden. The second observation is that the frequency hopping could impact the speech recognition rate. That means the VCS may not be able to recognize the attack command. So to defend against the frequency hopping attack, we could utilize the first phenomenon for detection. And the second phenomenon will put the attacker into the dilemma. That is, uh, when you switch the frequency too slow, your attack signal will be canceled. When you switch the uh, frequency too fast, the VCS may not be able to recognize your command. All right. The second variant is the middle frequency attack. So the attacker could set the attack signal frequency in the middle of the guard signals. So if this is the case, we can see the spectrum becomes like a, uh, the figure in the below, okay, uh, in the lower part of this slide, the signal three and the signal two overlap with each other. So the, this will make the adaptive filter uh, not work. So to, do, to deal with this problem, we could extract a signal three using the spectral subtraction and then cancel the attack signal, all right. So the third variant is the guard signal cancellation. Uh, so the attacker manages uh, to um, let the attack signal neutralize the guard signal. To do that, the attacker must be able to accurately measure the guard signal's amplitude, phase, and the frequency, but actually the amplitude are highly dynamic. So we uh, perform some feasibility analysis for guard signal cancellation attack, and we find that it's very, ex extremely to create the up exact opposite of the guard signal for cancellation, if it's not impossible, all right. So we prototype a system and uh, conduct e experiments. Uh, we first examine the AIC effect under attacks in different frequencies. We can see that the ratio of attack signal after cancellation could be, uh, after the cancellation and before the cancellation uh, could be basically below minus 20 dB, and uh, it can be ignored actually. So we verify that the spectral subtraction method could uh, deal with the middle frequency attack. And we also examine that if the VCS could recognize the legitimate command mixed with the attack signal, and this figure shows a success rate to cancel the attack signal while recognizing the legitimate voice commands. We can see that the success rate could be up to 98%. We also conduct experiments to other different VCSs and obtained similar results. So this is basically what I want to talk about. Thank you very much.